Mmm, it's an orange juice. We've got a new spell in the game and it counters buildings very well. Earthquake deals 244 damage per second to building cards like Goblin Hut, Inferno Tower, or Elixir Collector. Over three seconds, it deals a total of 732 damage to building cards. It'll do 61 damage per second to units and crown towers for a total of 183 damage. Earthquake also slows ground units by 35% in both move and attack speed. Not only does Earthquake slow down units, but it also slows down crown towers attack speed as well. That's huge. Think Ice Wizard interaction that slows the move speed and it slows the attack speed. If a unit is connected to your tower, it very well may be worth it to Earthquake the Giant in very specific conditions. Even Siege gets slowed down by 35%. Notice how close both mortars are shooting after the other. Once I earthquaked one of the mortars, notice how slow it is and how much longer it took to shoot compared to the other non-earthquaked mortar. This affects everything, including spawner buildings. Their unit production will also be slowed down by 35% on top of the massive 732 damage. Oof. What you absolutely need to do if you're going to use Earthquake on spawners or siege buildings is wait for it to load first before you cast your spell. The 35% slow does not apply to the deploy time. It only applies once after it loads and starts producing shooting units. That way you'll be fully utilizing the slow resulting in less spawner units and less shots. Here both mortars are hit by the earthquake. One before the load time finishes and one after it finishes. The one casted after it's loaded gets one shot less. That's insane. This also applies to expo. Elixir Collector gains one elixir after getting Earthquaked. Earthquake costs three elixir. The Elixir Collector costs six elixir and generates one elixir, so that's five for three, putting you at plus two elixir. Earthquake is the hard counter to an elixir collector. It is the textbook example of a positive elixir tree. Defensive buildings like a cannon and tombstone will get wrecked by the earthquake. This is a no-brainer. 732 damage is massive to structure-based cards. Tesla only takes damage when it's above ground, but shouldn't it damage underground Tesla as well? It is an earthquake, after all. Using Earthquake on the Inferno Tower will slow its charge by 35% and do massive amounts of damage. If you're going to be using Earthquake on the Inferno Tower and you know it's going to lock onto your tank, definitely wait for it to lock onto your tank before casting Earthquake to maximize that slowed reduced attack speed. To deny the most amount of waves from a goblin hut, you'll want to clip the spear goblin on its way out of the earthquake. Your princess tower can take out a damaged spear goblin without taking any damage. This will result in clipping the next spear goblin that spawns as well. But if you mistime this, you're not going to clip that next goblin. Once the cannon cart turns into a cannon, the earthquake does full damage on it. So if you have a cannon cart locked onto your tower, earthquake it! The drawback of Earthquake's slow effect is that units already slowed by the Ice Wizard or Ice Golem's Frost Nova is not going to be slowed down even further. Ice and Earth just don't mix, I guess. They don't stack. Units will not be slowed by more than 35%. Air units will not be affected by Earthquake. Using Earthquake on a Crown Tower isn't a bad idea at all. 183 damage is almost fireball damage and only costs 3 elixir. Of course, you'll want to snag other units or buildings to add value. Earthquaking archers or bomber alongside their tower is kind of like fireballing a musketeer or a wizard. They won't die from the spell, but your prince's tower will take care of the rest, dealing no damage to your tower. But you gotta be careful if they support those units with tanks. Earthquake can kill skeletons in two ticks while it can kill spear goblins and stab goblins in three ticks. It's actually not a bad defense against bait decks if they tricked your log or arrows out of rotation. Earthquake slow animations are somewhat hard to read compared to an ice wizard. You immediately know which units are ice, but if you earthquake a large group of units, a cluster of units, it's somewhat hard to differentiate which ones are slowed and which ones aren't slowed, especially around the borders. Because Earthquake only lasts 3 seconds and takes 2 seconds to kill skeletons, it doesn't defend Graveyard at all. If you have no other choice, use Earthquake in the middle of the 10 second Graveyard to maximize the amount of skeletons killed. <laughs> but let's be real here, if you're using Earthquake to defend a Graveyard, 
you're doomed. With the upgrade range of Sparky, she can now take on the Electro Wizard head on. But with the Earthquake or even a Snowball, the 35% slow slows it down just enough that it allows Electro Wizard to initiate the first attack, stopping him from getting vaporized. If you defend Goblin Barrel with Earthquake, it'll result in three stabs. If you cast it late, you'll eat another stab. Only do this if you have no other choice. Overall, with the addition of Earthquake, there are more options for spells, and I wouldn't be surprised to see triple spell decks. It does zap damage on ground units, fireball damage on crown towers, and lightning damage on regular buildings. If Three Musketeers revert back to its 9 elixir, in practice, Earthquake will help against the Three Musketeer archetype, destroying the pump while still having fireball and poison for the Three Musketeers itself. Earthquake gives you so much elixir advantage against buildings if it comes into the meta. We're going to be seeing a lot more decks without any buildings at all if it's in the meta. Earthquake handles the super popular Royal Giant Furnace deck really well. But if the Earthquake's not viable, then no one's going to have it and that Royal Giant Furnace deck is going to continue to thrive. EQ is definitely going to be a very good and beat down decks just because of how hard tanks get stopped by buildings. Like Golem or Lab Hunt getting destroyed by a cannon or Inferno Tower, especially against the Inferno Tower. It's definitely going to be able to handle way more effectively with a 3 elixir building destroying spell. Compared to like a 6 elixir lightning on the Inferno Tower, the Earthquake's gonna be a little bit better for the goal. Let me know what you guys think the deck is going to fit in, in this deck. This is the old Goizen deck. Poison used to slow by 35%. It used to stop Inferno Towers because it slowed its attack speed and everything else. But Earthquake does that now and it deals lightning damage. So this is like Goizen on steroids if there was Inferno Tower, but there isn't. So let's try it out. I'm going to do a couple classic challenges on this. Let's see how it goes. By the way, this card is completely dead if they don't have any buildings. Like It's, it's like a dead card that you cannot use. Uh, time that snowball, boom, 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 oh, one stab. That's not good, but let's let's try it out. How's this gonna work? Put down the giant in the back. Rotate to my earthquake. Put down the musketeer, kind of right here, maybe a little bit in the front. It's gonna start targeting onto the knight, and then right after I'm at the full amount of elixir, you go for the oh, oh yeah, zap that. Oh my goodness. Earthquake. Mismatched. Hard countered. Nope. Nope. Gonna snowball that. That's beautiful. Oh, that's not so beautiful. Mega Minion, do your thing. Oh my goodness. The Goblin made it. Even with Earthquake, I might have misplayed this a little bit. I'm not gonna do Miner this time, but I will want to do Musketeer. Right as the princess gets a little bit closer. Boom. Boom. Musketeer is going to cross. We're going to do nothing. Because we're going to reset our rotation. I'm going to put the giant in the back. Oh, shoot. No, 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 no. He's, he's going to barrel. He's going to barrel. No, don't let that knight tank. Uh, he doesn't have an answer to my giant now. So, it's almost double elixir with 13 seconds left. So, I'm going to put the giant in the very back right when I'm at 10 elixir. Bum bum bum, bum bum bum. Use my earthquake. Everybody's happy except him because I'm the winner. Uh, somehow I'm not threatened by that. I'm I'm gonna save my snowball for uh, more dangerous things, you know. Go for the miner. Take that out. That's super juicy. Oh yeah, earthquake on the goblin gang on the in inferno. Oh yeah. That way, the, there's no Inferno Tower to take care of my Prince. I'm going to wait for that to go down, and then I'm going to put down the Giant right there. Right then and there. And, you know what? We zap that. Go for the Miner in the back to take out the Princess, because she's actually kind of annoying. Did he try to hide that barrel in the rocket? <laughs> Alright, well, this is a really good example of Earthquake actually working. It's very rare to see Inferno Tower just get destroyed like that, but let's, let's, let's try one more game. Maybe we won't get so lucky. Maybe they won't have any baity ground units and they won't have any buildings and my Earthquake's gonna be a dead card. Maybe, maybe not. Earthquake doesn't quite replace the poison. It's a little scary if there's like a witch coming along and you only have Snowball or Zap. Night Witch, it's not gonna stop the Night Witch with the Earthquake alone, so we're gonna try it on Ladder this time. We only beat him in the challenge because he literally had the one card that Earthquake was good on. The building card. You know what? I'm, I'm Earthquaking that. 
two ticks to kill the skeletons though. Interesting. Slowed down the crown tower, slowed down the witch. My miner did a sizable amount of damage. Not too much, not too little. Oh my goodness. I, I need to put down a... That, that is obnoxious. He's panicking with Inferno Tower. Yup. Need to get rid of all that stuff. Prince tanks for the Musketeer. If he's got Skarmy, then I can Earthquake it. I'm Earthquaking that Witch. Straight up. It, it, it's like an inferior poison that kind of worked. I don't know. I would rather have had poison, I guess. No, but poison wouldn't have taken it out. It would have been a one more elixir for that. It would have been super expensive. It kind of works. I'm confused, but it works. Snowball, that good stuff. Wait for it to cross the bridge. Wait for her to cross the bridge. She's crossing the bridge. Put down the giant. Tanks for it all. Beautiful timing. Perfect timing. Let's try it out. I almost want to use Earthquake for the sake of using it, but I shouldn't. Uh, that giant skeleton's going to connect. I'm not going to use my miner to stop it. No way. I put down the prince. Giant skeleton dies. Bomb explodes on prince. Prince dies. There's no point. Just just embrace it. The tower's getting damaged, and that's the, that's the, that's the deal. I'm going to go for the musketeer. Oh, my goodness. Hog rider into prince. Dangerous. Oh my. See, this is where poison would be lovely right now. Oh my goodness. How is that witch still alive? I need to earthquake that witch. That is absurd. Yeah, earthquake didn't kill the witch. I had to zap it. I'm not feeling it with earthquake. I'm not feeling it. I'm definitely not feeling it with earthquake. Although, this deck does have like an 80% win rate, so there's that going for it. Maybe it's because I need to use Minor Poison. Maybe? It worked! It's It slowed down the Crown Tower. It's really subtle and you don't really notice it, but it slows down attack speed and everything else. I just don't like how it takes two ticks to kill a skeleton, or that it only lasts three seconds. I'd rather have the earthquake be two seconds and kill skeletons immediately in one tick, or I'd rather it be six ticks so that the slow effect lasts twice as long, just so that it feels like there's more to it than just a building destroyer, because if it, if it lasts four, five seconds, six seconds, it's more than just damage on buildings. It's actually a slow spell. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found some parts of it at least a little bit useful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more quality OJ.